Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we are talking about some things interior designers never do and you shouldn't either. Now the first one is use cool toned lighting. Now designers never use cool toned lighting and this is something I'm always telling you. I'm actually a bit of a lighting fanatic if you will. I love a moody environment that feels welcoming and warm and using a warmer toned light will definitely get you that feeling. It's all about feelings when it comes to a space, right? Like we all know someone that has some crazy light you either go over to their house and you're like, we're gonna go home immediately because I can't deal with it, or someone in your neighborhood and it's just like this ghastly glaring light out of their house, it's like a blue light, way too much. Who lives like that? No one I know because we all love a warm toned light atmosphere in the space. And that's really what creates a luxurious, sumptuous, relaxing feeling is having that warm element. Something else that's worth noting is layered lighting and what you're doing with those tones of light as well. Typically, I like for all of my lighting tones to match or be very consistent. I'll typically use 2700 in terms of the temperature for my main light sources and secondary sources like lamps, picture lights, even sconces. I'll do all in a really warm tone light. And then if you have a recessed lighting, you may look at 3000 in those because those are more essential lighting for you to see what you're doing, clean the house, and that sort of thing. Now it is worth saying and me telling you that cool toned lighting can actually be really good for filming purposes. So maybe whoever in your neighborhood has all cool tone lights or filming something. I don't personally film nighttime activities in my home, but that's a topic for another conversation. You also wanna be mindful of the temperature of lighting you're using in spaces like bathrooms and kitchens. You may want more light in those spaces so you can see your face and see your makeup, see every pore you have going on or see what you're doing when you're chopping up vegetables so you don't chop off your finger or whatever. So definitely look at adding more lighting into those spaces. I personally wouldn't necessarily go too high in terms of the temperature because the bigger the number, the cooler the tone of light is. So I like that 3000, maybe 3500, but I would just add more lights to get that effect. Under cabinet lighting is wonderful as well. Layered lighting of any sort that you can bring into a space is really great because you create an atmosphere. You can add really soft lighting into the corners of your spaces and the overhead light. I also always recommend and dimmable light sources. Some people like bulbs. I prefer just a wired in dimmer, but that's just who I am. I also personally never recommend you use downward casted light fixtures because that light shining down, not only can it give you a headache, it can be a little bit overwhelming and it actually doesn't make people look good when they're sitting in a space. I mean, I personally can't relate to that struggle because I look good every time of the day, everywhere, and no matter what I'm wearing or light source I am in, but that's just me. So definitely be on the lookout for having light that shines upwards because no matter how bright that light is, it will be softer as it fills the space and as it lights up the ceiling of the space instead of pointed down at the floor or at the people that are sitting underneath it. The next thing interior designers never ever do is buy everything brand new. Having everything new can feel like a status symbol for a lot of people and I absolutely respect that. You know, you don't want your friends coming over being like, oh, you bought something old, it's used. In my opinion, I would just invite that person to go back to their home, but maybe that's not who you are and that's absolutely fine, but using everything brand new can sometimes make a space feel a little bit stagnant. It can just feel very designed and sometimes it doesn't feel like it has a lot of character. So I always am telling people People look out for bringing vintage or antiques into your home. I think that's an immediate way to build great character into a space and to create spaces that really have great depth and dimension and that have personality. I think that's really important to bring into a space. But I think layering in things that are old and new can build such great elements into a space and make it feel individual and personal. And I think that's really wonderful. If you look at some of the top and the best designers in the world in the industry, this is something they do no matter what the style is. For me, I like mixing really bold, modern pieces, like upholstered pieces in with really great, amazing wood tone pieces that have a traditional feel to them, like this table behind me. This actually is not an antique. It was purchased brand new, and it's in a 
fantastic piece, amazing, amazing quality. But a lot of the accessories I have on that piece are actually vintage because they bring in an interesting character and warmth. And then I have a modern brand new sofa here. So layering old and new things together really builds individuality and character into a space. Because let's be real, when something is brand new, there's no exclusivity. Anyone could go buy it. All it takes is having the money to do that, which Sometimes that creates exclusivity, certainly, but other times it's just out there. Anybody could buy it, anybody could replicate everything. But having something that's old, that's a one-off, that nobody else can get, is really amazing in terms of building in your own personality to a space and something that really represents you. I would say look at this in terms of everything in the space. Maybe you don't want vintage or antique furniture. I totally get that. Like having a sofa reupholstered is not easy, it's not inexpensive, and I can completely understand the struggle of that, but having vintage accessories or books on your table, that's a great way to get something that's a little more affordable and something that's great quality, but also very personal to you. Be on the lookout for bringing in vintage, antiques, older pieces into your space, something that's custom or a one-off that can't be replicated or never will be, Bring that into the space. That's the character, that's the personality, and that's what makes the space feel individual. And also it builds authenticity and makes the space feel like it's been cultivated, like you're well-traveled, like where did you purchase these things? I wanna know what the backstory on them is. It creates interest and that is essential to great design. You know what I just mentioned and is another thing interior designers love to use, we never forego this, is mixing different styles together. And I think this is all about sourcing and cultivating and finding inspiration for a space. And also it can be a challenge to the perspective of whoever is using that space. And I think that's really fantastic. Like it's not very common you see an ultra postmodern, interesting sofa like this one here I have. It's the Soriana and it's in this great Wedgwood blue color that I absolutely love. But I juxtapose it with something that has a really traditional feel to it, like the console table behind me. I use this mentality in every space in my home. I use a modern rug in a more traditional space or vice versa. I think that's really interesting and it creates a sense of imbalance. It creates a beautiful contrast that really provokes thought and invites you to observe and to take in and allows your eye to rest and have movement throughout a space. I think that makes a great space and really wonderful design. Sourcing is one of the best ways to create visual interest in your home by looking at what's out there. For me, I get inspired by usually the scale of a space, the way I want something to fit and how I want a space to look in terms of its proportions. I think that's something really important to my design aesthetic. So I look at what am I interested in, what height do I want something to be, how do I want it to feel in this space, and what do I want to say with it? What message do I want to send about how the space is used? And then I start looking for fabrics or colors I'm interested in. Once I've got that narrowed down, then I start Start sourcing and looking and I go to all of my favorite websites I look for things like this sofa for example I actually had something else in mind originally and then I was sourcing I was looking for them and I was getting inspired by different things I started looking at the dimensions and proportions of things I was interested in and I realized the sofa I was looking at while it had become very trendy for me it was actually going to be way too low to the ground and so I said nope we're moving on from that and I found something even better that I really love sourcing that other piece is really what inspired the purchase of this piece. And I also really wanted to send a message about the clash of modern and traditional together and how interesting they can be, how timeless they can feel, and how elegant all of this can feel put together. So that's really what I wanted to do. I have taller pieces that are more traditional, like my coffee table, like the table behind me, and something that is lower to the ground and a little more chic, like this sofa and like the chairs I have in this space. All of that makes it feel very curated, and unlike any Thing you're seeing right now because it's true to my style and my personal aesthetic. I think that no matter what quality or what style of piece you're looking for, the easiest way to make a space feel impactful, feel designer, is through the window treatments. And designers never, ever get anything straight out of a package. That doesn't mean you can't get store-bought draperies, it just means something has to be done to them 
to make them feel luxurious and beautiful. Drapes are an easy, easy way to completely change the feeling of a space, whether that's through the hardware of the rod or the style of pleat the drape has, whether it has that or not, what style hardware, mounting hardware does it have grommets or rings, all of that can completely change the feeling of a space from traditional to modern to contemporary or anything in between. I love drapery, but I really love drapery that looks high quality because it will make any space look expensive and look luxurious when it's properly fitted into it. So what I will see designers do is if they're using a more budget-friendly drapery option, like something that's pre-made or pre-packaged that you could just buy from a store, they'll get them a size larger and have them altered to have the perfect fit in the space. That's something that's really easy to have done if you can't sew yourself you can always go to someone that does alterations and have something as simple as this done for not a lot of money. Sometimes it can even be the cost of one more panel of drapery. So you get something really great that looks and feels luxurious expensive, but doesn't actually have a ton of money put into it. And I love that for you. Something I really love is a Roman shade. These look luxurious and very expensive and they are, but what I will often do is have a faux Roman shade made and then just use normal blinds behind it. Because when the blinds are up, you can't see them and it's like there's nothing there. And then instead of using the shade, which is non-functional and you save money by having it be non-functional, you could just use the blinds. I think that's a really great way to get a beautiful window treatment without having to put a ton of money into it. And you can also go semi-custom on things that are cut or made to measure or hemmed to length. Really great drapery makes the difference in a space and I don't care what anyone tells you getting good drapes or putting some effort into them will instantly make a space feel luxurious and like a designer had a hand in doing it. And you could tell everyone a designer did have a hand in it, darling, and that's me. Tell them Garrett Lachique is responsible for it all. Okay, I love that for you, love that for me. But I think having really great draperies in a space makes the world of difference. And just about every designer out there agrees. If you look at any design, look at the drapery first. It really makes the biggest impact in a space, even if it's not expensive. Because it doesn't actually have to be. Let's talk about a principle I incorporate into every space I work on, every house I'm in. I think one of the most essential elements of interior design and something every designer strives to incorporate is consistency. And that can be through the quality, through the finish, through the color, or through the materials used. If I'm entering a space that's already had some renovations done, like if you already had wood floors installed in your living room and you say, Garrett, I really need to have uh, wood floors put into the dining room that's open to it or something like that, where they're going to touch, I'm going to push to find the same exact material, that same wood, the same species, the same size of it, as close as I can get to it to use in that space because we want there to be Feel like there's a good connection between them. So that consistency is what will create that for us. And if you're looking at a similar material or you can't find the exact same thing, change the direction you're laying it in and no one will notice. That's a really great tip and a key essential to incorporate into a space because it means that you can save on your budget and you can save on the headache of having to find the exact matching material. But in a space where tile touches tile, I want them to be the same type of material. Even if they're a different tile, maybe we do a mosaic in the bathroom and then a large format, uh, 18 by 18 tile in the hallway. That's something that can work out beautifully as well. You also wanna look at quality. You don't wanna have a really great high-end sofa with flat pack end tables because the end tables might look flat pack. They might look cheap compared to a really high-end piece. So instead go vintage and look for something that's really great quality, but at a lower price point and you'll get that consistency in the quality that the space needs. Consistency is key in no matter what you do, whether that is through scheduling or or the way you're, I don't know, cleaning your house. You want everything to be consistent and the same thing goes for your design. So for me, I want consistency in the color scheme, in the materials used. So if that room over there is blue, like my dining room, I incorporate some blue like the sofa into my living room. So there feels like there's a really strong connection even though this room is painted white and that room is painted blue. They're different usages, they're different colors, but they still feel like they're a part of a whole. That can be something that's really great for making your house have incredible flow throughout it. Now that you've learned some of my top interior design tips and tricks, be sure to check out this video right here to find out what a ton of people are doing on social media, but I would never do, and I will see you over there.